Welcome, all of you who are watching live and those who will watch the video later on YouTube or anywhere at home when you have downloaded. It is time we're going to study. So I, I beg that we humble ourselves a word of prayer, then we can begin. Help us, O oh God, for we have come before you, naked and blind and poor and wretched and miserable. And we seek your guidance, O oh Lord. Come and speak to us, open our minds, empty everything in me, and fill me with your words, that I may speak those which come from you. Come and explain to your people through me, in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> We're going to talk about he spake as a dragon. Who is this one who spake as a dragon? We need to understand such that we are not caught up between the lines. The Bible tells us that we are living in the very last days and the final events are going to be rapid ones. So we need to be very, very careful and watchful. So let's see. From the last episode, we looked at the beast that came out of the sea and we saw that that was none other than the power in Rome, which is the papacy. And then, uh, which was Roman Catholicism. But we also saw that the papacy is when the church sits upon the state. Now, that's the union of church and state is what constitutes the, the church. I mean, it's what constitutes what we call the papacy. So if the papacy is, is the dragon gave him his power, then we saw so that there was another power that rose from the earth. And for it, it never fought anyone. It, were, it just came in. It's as if this system came in. We saw an, an, a beast that rose and it was coming from the earth and it's, it just came not fighting anyone. So it's, its purpose is as if it is just brought for a given purpose. It is not going to rule. So we, we looked at the different characteristics like uh, let's read Revelation 13, 11, says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and spake as a dragon. And we saw that he exercises all the, the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So when you look at this, you'll notice that, first of all, it exercises all the power of the first beast. That means it is the, the first beast's power that this one is using, and that's why it is coming. Again, it causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship. So, and it, it causes them to worship the first beast. So it will exercise the authority of the first beast and will cause everyone on earth to worship the first beast. Which beast is that? Whose deadly wound was healed. So the wound must first heal in order for this second beast to hand over power, to, rest, to exercise the power and cause the earth and all them that dwell therein to worship this beast. So look at the chronology very well. He must exercise all the power and, and, and will cause all to worship when the deadly wound is healed. So this power must come to first heal the wound of this beast. So we looked at these characteristics, all of them. So we want to, in the first one, so we want to now to look at the fifth one or the fourth one and he spake 
as a dragon. What does it mean to speak as a dragon? Revelation 13, 2 tells us, and the dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. So, in that, so it is saying that the dragon gave him his power, his seat, and great authority. Now that the first beast uses the dragon's power. So the dragon is in the first beast. So when you're talking about the first, the first beast, it now looks to be the dragon. The dragon is controlling the first beast. And when you go to history, you notice that the seat of Rome was the city of, of Rome. So in other words, physically, the seat which was given to, to, the, to the first beast, which is the papacy, must be the Vatican, the very place, because Vatica uh, was the god of the dead, the goddess of the dead, and you know that Vatican City, which is Vatican, which is the, the, the city of the dead, basically. So that is where exactly the dragon sits, because he's the one of the dead. God is the god of life. Then that one must be the one for death. And if you go to, to the museums, you notice that in the Vatican, this is the coat of arms of Gregory the 20th, the, the 13th, in St. Peter's, there you see the dragon. Just there, this is above what he had constructed, and there you see the dragon in there. And again, when you look at uh, the sculpture here of St. Paul, and uh, the, uh, sorry, the Pops, and they, show the, 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 they hold the two keys, and you notice the dragon there. They show it. Again, when you come to the coat of arms in the gallery of the maps, the coat of arms itself of the Vatican, there is the dragon just there. So they, they make no bones about it. They know it is what it is. They put it plainly. So there they, 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 they show another one in Capella uh, Gregoriana. They live showing the three scientists who developed the new calendar being introduced to the pop. So they, they, here uh, they come, who made the new calendar in, in 1582, and they were brought to the pop, and down there is the dragon. And again, there is another one here. So everywhere, they physically show that surely the dragon is in Rome, because he's, he's the symbols and everything really show that that is where they are. Revelation 13, 11 tells us that he spake like a dragon. So after having known who the dragon is, which is, uh, and we know that it is speaking now through the, 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 the papacy together, then let us see how does the dragon speak? So how does the nation speak? That's the first question. And the answer is through its laws and legislation, legislative bodies. So the only way a country can speak is through making laws. And God spoke, every time God spoke, it was his law. And the Lord spoke from the mount, telling Moses, do this, do this, do this, tell the children of Israel to do this and to do this, this is my will. So he was giving them the commandments the way they should live, the way they should do things. So he will exercise all the authority of the first beast in, his, in the presence, in his presence. So that, that's the, the part of the second beast. And he was granted the power to give breath to the image of the beast. And that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. So now let's go back to the first beast. Did the first beast kill God's people? Yes. Now, did the dragon itself kill God's people? Yes. The dragon was working through pagan Rome because in Revelation 12, they tell us that the dragon 
uh, was wrath with a woman, and we, we saw the persecution that that the Roman state, the pagan Rome, gave upon the disciples, including Jesus himself, but basically the, 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 the entire uh, work of the disciples were always disturbed by the Roman state. So in other words, the Romans, the, the Roman church, uh, sorry, the, the Roman state by then was the dragon. And the dragon in the Bible represents secular powers because they operate without God. So uh, they, they, they made laws and they persecuted God's people. This persecution was passed on to Pope Rome. So the dragon gave him his power. So he exercised that power by persecuting God's people. So even if, if this system is to speak like a dragon, then it should make laws that would make people to be killed if they don't agree with those laws. Basically, that's what it stands for. Let's see, how do they speak? Uh, Chief Justice William Request says, the wall of separation between church and state is a metaphor based on bad history. Okay, that's what he's saying. A metaphor which has proved useless as a guide to judging. It should be frankly and explicitly abandoned. Okay, now this is what the Chief Justice is saying, and this must have been a Catholic. But let's ask F. Kennedy, a president who was a Catholic, what did he think about that? Because the dragon wants church and state together. That means that the, the beasts, who, which was given the power, the, the, the authority, the seat, must also want church and state. And we saw that, that that's what the papacy did. Then also this system must advocate for that as well. But let's ask uh, pr the presidents to tell us. I believe in an America where the separation of church and state is absolute, where no Catholic prelate would tell the president, should he be Catholic, how to act, and no Protestant minister would tell his parishioners for whom to vote, where no church or church school is granted any public funds or political preference, and where no man is denied public office merely because his religion differs from the president who might appoint him or the people who might elect him. I believe in an America that is officially neither Catholic, Protestant, nor Jewish, where no public official either requests or accepts instructions on public policy from the Pope, the National Council of Churches, or any other ecclesiastical source, where no religious body seeks to impose its will, directly or indirectly, upon the general populace, or the public acts of its officials, and where religious liberty is so indivisible that an act against one church is treated as an act against all. Yeah. So he says he believes that church and state should be totally separate. So that is what is found in the writings. So the writing says something, but on the surface, it's different. This is what the second beast is doing. Now let's first go back and see what the, the dragon used to say. Then we can come and see, is it the same thing that is being said today? Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. And he said unto the woman, the serpent, Yeah, hath God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the serpent, let's go to verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. I'm reading the verses which the serpent gave, the dragon. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So the, 
the dragon is saying, number one, it is deceiving. It, it brings presumption. It tells that if you, is it really that way? Surely, is it that way? I don't think it is so. You, sh you shall not surely die. And it gives even the reasons. God never gave Adam any reason for not eating the, the fruit. He just told him, if you do this, these are the outcomes. No explanation whatsoever. It was by faith. But the devil uses a lot of explanations and things which look like evidence that his lies may be taken into account. Matthew 4, he comes to Jesus and what does he say? And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Look at that kind of mindset. If thou be the Son of God. In other words, we, if this system is to speak, this beast is to speak like as a dragon, and you're seeing the dragon language here, then this beast should have a, a, a kind of thinking that brings people to doubt the word of God. If you are the son of God, then do this. In other words, the, this piece should, might bring up a system or a religion where people claim the power of God to do certain things. Since we are children of God, we can do this. Since we are already saved, we can do this. And since we are already saved, we can do this. That is the language. It must speak. And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. Okay, you can give it up. He even said it to Job through the woman that, that please, it is okay, you can cast God and die. He shall give his angels charge over you concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. So that is another one, for it is written. So the next step, they would use the word of God. So the first time is presumption, use, using the name of, or, 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 or the, using the name of Christianity, or using the, 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 the reason that we are now sons of God, then we can command anything to become whatever we want. Do we see or do we know of any system, any religious system that comes from America that claim that since we are the sons of God, then we command this one to be this and we command ABCD to come like this. This is the dragon language. Because that's what they claim, the sonship, and again use it for their own benefit. But Jesus did not do that. And again, they use the, the word. Satan used the word in his perspective. Is it possible that they will use the scripture in their perspective? This is dragon language. And saith unto him, all of these things will I give thee, if thou will fall down and worship me. So the third one is worship. So we expect the last part of it is to call people to worship. So number one, presumption, using the name of God in vain, when they're breaking the, second, the third commandment. And again, using the word of God the way they want. And finally, they will call everyone to bow down and worship. So Revelation says it, even the tempter himself used it, the very system in when he was tempting Christ. Now, when we go to Daniel, the book of Daniel, chapter 3, when we begin from verse 3 says, then the princes, the governors and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. So this is a king of Babylon. And he, this, is, this is another, another power, a, a beast. The dragon is using as well. And, and makes an image. 
and they stood before the image which that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So there would be a setting up of an image. Then and Herod cried out, to you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages. Is that the entire world? Yes, of course. The, in, everyone is included. People, nations, and languages. None is excluded. That at the time you hear the sound of the cornet. So now that's the, he made laws, he made a decree that did not make an exception to anyone. It was a call for everyone in the world to put in practice. So this is what the, the, the dragon is saying. This is the dragon language. Wanted Jesus Christ to bow because Jesus had all humanity in him to, to the, to, for, for his salvation. And again, so he brings the same thing, the same temptation to him. And here we see in Daniel, when the king did the same very thing, when he commanded all people of the world to, to bow down. So there were peoples, nations, and languages. Interestingly, the Bible has a call to all peoples, nations, and tongues. The three angels' messages should go to all people, nations, and tongues. And, and we know in Revelation chapter 10, thou must prophesy again before many people and nations and tongues. So in other words, there is a, a universal message that goes to everyone, but there is again another call that the dragon must do. Now imagine one side keeps quiet. Of course, the dragon can't keep quiet. It is the other side. What if God's people keep quiet and they don't send the message to all people, nations and languages, and people get only one side, how will they make a choice? And this is why the end is not coming because people are having only one side, one narrative. God wants us to establish the other side that people may make a choice. Now let's go to Luke 2, one to five. We are tracing legislation how the dragon has been coming and working and working, making rules for the entire world. And it came to pass in those days that there were, they went out a decree from Caesarea Augusta, Augustus, Caesar Augustus, that all the world should be taxed. The entire world had to be taxed. And the word taxing there is registration. They had to go and be registered why he wants to know everything. So the successors of the Babylonian, the Middle Persians, the Romans, uh, uh, now are the ones giving decrees to make everyone register. So the dragon wants registration. That means if the second beast is to speak as a dragon, it should make everyone be registered and known. And this taxing or registration was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed or registered, everyone in his own city, you see? So it goes to even the cities themselves. So go back to cities, be registered. So this, let's take that, that these were national IDs. So, so everyone must be known wherever they are. So Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city uh, of Nazareth into Judea and to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was, the, he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed, registered with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with the child. So they went to be registered. So the, the Caesars, the successors, or the dragon, already made a decree that everyone should be taxed or registered. It means that even the other power, the second beast, which is the United States, must also speak and tell everyone that you must be registered, you must have these rules, you must be vaccinated, you must do this, everything, you must worship like this. 
So the Caesars made legislations that everyone around the world should follow. So that is the language of the dragon. You, you make, you speak through legislation, you make laws and you force everyone to abide by them. So let's go to the current Caesars. Do they make these laws? Is, uh, uh, let them tell us. This is Lodato C Movement, uh, um, .org news. Let's see this. How do they speak? What are their, what is their mouthpiece? Encyclicals began uh, as a, a sort of the email of the early church, then get their name from Greek word, circle or circular. Important letters from the Pope would be forwarded to bishops and local churches who would, who would then copy and forward them to other bishops and local churches until the entire church received the message. So you see, you, something is written and it must be passed on to everyone in the world. This is how the beast speaks, the dragon speaks. This could take a good deal of effort, so you can imagine they must have contained vital information and were not issued all that regularly. So today's encyclicals are immediately posted on the Vatican website in many languages for the world to read. So this is a worldwide thing. The Caesar, the success of Caesar is sending a message to the whole world but their principal audience is still the bishops and pastors of the world and all who teach and defend the Catholic faith. But the message is for the entire world. So if you go to Vatican.va itself, you will see uh, encyclicals, there you see them. Current one is Fratelli Tutti. There's another one they are writing which is about the, the the, 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 the wars, they're compiling the encyclical to compile about the wars of Russia and Ukraine, stuff like that. We had a lecture on that. Now, he, he, he writes them in how many languages? Arabic, uh, Belarusian, Chinese, Chinese Taiwan, Dutch, English, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Polish, Portuguese, Slovenian, Spanish, Ukraine, Ukrainian. So all languages receive the message. So this is a decree and it goes to all people, nations and tongues, wherever they are. So nothing has changed as the Caesars used to did, the same is done here. And let's have a look at what they say. Is it really a worldwide document that should go to everyone in order to be executed? The Vatican releases Pope Francis's wildly anticipated encyclical on the environment. La naturaleza grita. Deténganse. Deténganse. Protégé climatique. Un manque de la protection de la nature qui pousse aujourd'hui de nos populations à quitter ces nous. É perder a terra, a floresta. O grande agronegócio que está chegando aí. The marine heat waves are causing an unknown amount of death among corals. I want all the global leaders to do something to stop climate change because if it's not going to be stopped, it's going to harm our future. Queridos poetas sociales, porque ustedes son poetas sociales porque tienen la capacidad y el coraje de crear esperanza allí donde solo aparece descarte y exclusión. Je ne pas à rester tranquille parfois. J'ai un esprit qui voyage. Le monde va changer. Parce que ce qui était découvert, aujourd'hui est découvert. Il faut lisser des liens très forts et il ne faut jamais rompre ce lien. Je suis ma hero, Ivan. Que personne de nous est uni seul. Nous avons tous les besoins les uns des autres. Try to be the change you want to see in the world. We arrive as individuals with very different stories, but 
we all share the dream. It's the message for our earth, for the entire earth. It should receive that message. So in others, this is a letter. This is the dragon speaking. So now let's see if the, if that's how the dragon is speaking through this beast is speaking. Then let's see would the United States have the same? Would it have some documents it would publish that are authoritative and are sending to to the entire world, even to an extent of saying, if you are not with us, then you are against us. This is. Uh, Bureau of Justice uh, Assistance, United States Department of Justice. So it says here, executive orders on privacy and civil liberties and the information sharing environment. Executive orders are official documents through which the president of the United States manages the operations of federal government. The directive cites, the directive site the president is authority under the constitution and state. EOs, executive orders, are published in the federal register and they may be revoked by the president at any time. So he can write it, implement, then removes it. Although executive orders have historical related, historically related to routine administrative matters, and internal operations of federal agencies, recent presidents have used executive orders more broadly to carry out policies and programs. So they can be even broader past, just as an encyclical is. It can come into, at the basis, at the level of the church, but it can be wider than where the scope is expected. So they can go further and father. So this is a page, Arnold Ventures, it's, it shows us Trump executive orders. So he signs the executive orders. There we have Biden signs executive orders targeting American supply chains in critical areas. So, so they already the, they, they have orders that are signed to show that they have power. Washington President Joe Biden signed an executive order Wednesday requiring a, a review of the global supply chains in key industries in an effort to boost domestic production and avoid shortages in critical goods amid the corona pandemic. This is February 25th, 2021. So, and Biden's actions was spewed in part by the global semiconductor shortage. So he writes something to, to help everyone understand that they have power to tell everyone what to do. Remember, says, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And they had two horns like a lamb and speck as a dragon. Now let's see, uh, have the presidents if they knew very well that the, the, the Catholicism is a dragon and we should never allow the Pope or anyone to dictate, have they been coming so close to the papacy? Because if you go to history, the United States had what they call the Monroe Doctrine, which said that the United States can never involve itself in European affairs or any other affairs of any other continent. So that's what they, they, they had always had. Is it possible that this can be broken and something else can happen? Let's see. So presidents of America start coming to the Vatican. Jimmy Carter, there is. So this is Pontifex Maximus. Then later, I come as a pilgrim, a pilgrim in the cause of justice and peace and human solidarity 
striving to build up the one human family. Good morning, sir. How nice. Have you heard that? Even from Pope John Paul II, they were talking about solidarity and one human family. Then later comes President Bush, who succeeded Reagan. How nice to see this. In the middle of the big meeting. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> this is Kathy Super, my right hand person. Very faithful Catholic of many years. John Rogers has been very, very supportive of the efforts of the Jesus. We've got about you and the sinner. Okay, thank you, sir. He won't let you down. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. That one was there. Let's look at another one. He visits America. The Pope himself. And is welcomed by none other than Bo Clinton. Bill Clinton, oh, by the way, started from a Jesuit university which is Georgetown. What did they say to him? This is a religious leader, but what did they say to him? Forget our responsibility. We honor you for helping to lead a revolution of values and spirit in Central Europe and the former Soviet Union, freeing millions to live by conscience not coercion, and freeing all of us from the constant fear of nuclear war. At the same time, I know that you will hear me, my plea to open wide your hearts to the ever-increasing plight and urgent needs of our less fortunate brothers and sisters throughout the world. So the Pope, a religious system, is speaking and they're saying that he was the one that helped to, to end the nuclear war, to do this. And this is a United States president trying to, to, to really show. And you have seen that George Bush said himself that all these, the, 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 the faithful ones, that the, the, the ones that are close to him, were all faithful Catholics. So you see how Rome slowly uh, penetrates uh, United States and surely they will speak as a dragon. Now, here is Trump. He talks about uh, his, uh, his, 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 his religion. Let's hear him. The Bible certainly is one of if not, I mean, it is the book. Let's pray together, may we? Yes. I believe in God. I am Christian. I'm a Protestant. I'm very proud of it. Presbyterian, to be exact. I'm Presbyterian. Boy, that's down the middle of the road, folks, in all fairness. I mean, Seventh-day Adventist, I don't know about. I have great relationship with God. I have great I relationship have with... Uh, he said he knows all. Is it back? I mean, Seventh Day Adventist. Why do you have to mention that have... he's a, a, a Presbyterian? He's everything, but Seventh Day Adventist, I don't know about them. How can he fail to know a religious system that, 
uh, a church that developed from 1844 out of America in history it is known but doesn't totally know it and he says he's a Christian but doesn't know about seven the Adventists so does that tell us how much work we have to do or does that isn't that also the other side showing us that the this system is already getting as far away from the truth as possible and we must inform even the presidents to know what they are supposed to do now let him speak when the when uh, the pope said he was not a christian what did he say So I just wrote this out very quickly about the Pope. Do you want to hear it? Should I read it to you? Okay. He actually said that maybe I'm not a good Christian or something. It's unbelievable, which is really not a nice thing to say. So it's a response from Donald Trump. It says, if and when the Vatican is attacked by ISIS. You know, ISIS, their primary trophy, very few people know this. I read this about two months ago. Nobody even believed it. Their primary thing, you've seen what they've done all over the Middle East. Their primary goal is to get to the Vatican. That would be their ultimate trophy. They want to do what they did to all of these magnificent artifacts and all of the beautiful museums that they've totally destroyed all over the Middle East, right? They're, and I didn't know this. I read this like four or five months ago. I made mention of it two months ago. And everyone said, what are you talking about? They thought, like, I'm kidding. It's true. And now there are stories about it, not big stories, but there are stories about it. And I was checked by one of the reporters that said, they don't want to talk about the." Then he called up and apologized. The big thing, they want to get to the Vatican. So if and when the Vatican is attacked by ISIS, which as everyone knows is ISIS's ultimate trophy, I can promise you that the Pope would have only wished and prayed that Donald Trump would have been president because it's true. It's true. Because this would not have happened. ISIS would have been eradicated, unlike what is happening now, with our all talk, no action politicians. That's what's happening now. Yeah. So in other words, listen carefully. That ISIS, ISIS, uh, ISIS's most important goal is to reach the Vatican. So you see now the terrorist is no longer killing people in the East, but is going to the Vatican. Which, which system on earth has its eyes and attack on the Vatican and says that is the man of sin? That must be seven Adventism. Could that, couldn't, could that mean that Donald Trump is trying to say that that very soon, the Vatican would say all of those who speak against the Vatican are terrorists, and that is ISIS, and the ultimate goal is to reach the Vatican, and would wish, listen carefully, would, the Pope would wish that Donald, Donald Trump would have been president, because he would have eradicated all of those. In other words, the United States would eradicate anyone who would wish to enter the Vatican? Who would wish to speak against the Vatican? The United States will deal with him. So isn't that already telling you that th this system must restore, must be protecting the, the second beast, must be protecting the first beast to rise to power? Donald Trump says it himself. He says it himself. So I just wrote this out very quickly. It is my great honor to address the National Catholic Prayer Breakfast. I want to thank my good friend, Leonard Leo, and the board members of this wonderful breakfast, as well as, of course, the Knights of Columbus. And congratulations to Attorney General Bill Barr, special man, on receiving the annual award. I also want to express my deep gratitude to every person who prays for me and for the First Lady and for our country. We love our country. There's no country like it. I grew up next to a Catholic church in Queens, New York, and I saw how much incredible work the Catholic Church did for our community. These are amazing people. These are great, great people. Catholic schools give many underserved children 
the chance to reach their God-given potential. Catholics of all backgrounds share the love of Christ with the most vulnerable as they care for the elderly, the homeless, and neighbors in need. Our nation is strong because of Catholics and all people of faith. We believe in the joy of family, the blessing of freedom, and the dignity of work, and the eternal truth that every child, born and unborn, is made in the holy image of God. I will always protect the vital role of religion and prayer in American society, and I will always defend the sacred right to life. Today, I am announcing that I will be signing the Born Alive Executive Order to ensure that all precious babies born alive, no matter their circumstances, receive the medical care that they deserve. This is our sacrosanct moral duty. We are also increasing federal funding for the neonatal research to ensure that every child has the very best chance to thrive and to grow. Melania and I recently visited the shrine of St. John Paul II, a man who had such a profound impact on our country and the world. It was an incredible visit. On his first visit to so the United she States... Finishes by, as he's finishing, he's saying that he visited the shrine. What does a Protestant have to do with the shrine? And this is the guy loved by evangelicals and the Baptists and, and the what, and is the one who restored Jerusalem. But he visited the shrine of John Paul II. And it's interesting, he's saying that it, the man who made an impact on the on, on United States. So you see, United States is being impacted by who? The first beast. The first beast. Now, let's go and see. Both sides, during the elections, both sides have to speak. Now, this is, of course, Cardinal Dolan, Robert Dolan, uh, the Archbishop of New York. And uh, we, we, before there is um, the, the elections, there's, always, there's what they call the Smith dinner. And all the contestants in the presidential arena have to all come and eat together and give a speech. Now, let's listen to the speech of both the candidates that was given in 2020 to see exactly, to listen and see what exactly they were talking about. Thank you, Mary, for that introduction. Your Eminence, Cardinal Dolan, and everyone at the site of the Al Smith Memorial Foundation, thank you all for having me and for supporting the charities that care for New York's children and families in need in the name of a good man who believed that faith without works is dead. For we know Alfred E. Smith by what he did. I know there's disappointment that the dinner tonight couldn't continue as normal for us to sit together and put politics aside for a night because these are difficult times for our country, a pandemic, a recession, a reckoning on race, a changing climate, with each crisis, our faith is tested. Faith in our institutions, in one another, in truth, in science, and reason. We have to guard ourselves from rationalizing that this is normal and from numbing us to the pain and suffering of so many fellow Americans. You know, too many people woke up this morning, went to the kitchen table, and there was an empty chair. For just days ago, or weeks ago, or a month ago, a loved one sat talking, laughing, sharing their dreams. And now they're gone, lost to a relentless and unforgiving virus. I know for me, my Catholic faith has helped me through the darkness as I've had to bury pieces of my soul deep in the earth and eventually found purpose to live a life worthy of those I lost. And throughout my life in public service, I've been guided by the tenets of Catholic social doctrine that cuts across all confessional faiths. What you do to the least among us, you do unto me. We have an obligation to one another. We cannot serve ourselves at the expense of others. We have a responsibility to future generations. And that's the charge before us today. I know it's hard to see it right now. Our problems are so systemic. The losses are so catastrophic. At times, it feels easier to say, we're done, it's over, 
What's the point? But the American people don't give up. There is no quit in America. Mark my words. One day we'll look back in awe, not at how far we fell, but how fiercely we fought back as a country. And that sense of hope and possibility reminds me of the first time I met Pope Francis in 2013, when I had the privilege of attending his inauguration at the Vatican. When I greeted him, he said, Mr. Vice President, you're always welcome here. He was really sending a message to the world to put out a welcome sign on the front door of our church. Two years later, President Obama and I welcomed him at the White House. At that same moment, we shared a sense of hope and possibility together. And for me, it came in a very personal moment, a very tough time in the life of my family. Our son, Bo, had just died a few months earlier. But Pope Francis took the time to meet with my entire family to help us see the light through the darkness. I live in an amazing country. We all live in an amazing country. Where an Irish Catholic kid like me from Scranton, Pennsylvania, would one day befriend the Jesuit Pope. But that's who we are as a country, where anything is possible when we care for one another, when we look out for one another, when we keep the faith. May God bless you all. Okay. It was quite long, but it had a lot of important points. Not because it has said that that number one, he said that he has been guided by the Catholic social teaching. And he said that um, all these uh, things are possible in America because that's what they are. The, everything is possible. He's now a friend of a Jesuit Pope and he was the vice president during Obama's time. And he's a Catholic and he has been so, the Catholic influence is so much in him. So now presidents attending Catholic, yet they said that, excuse me, church and state must be separate. But look at the thinking of Catholicism already impacting their lives and even paving the way to the state itself. Now let's hear. Thank you, Mary, for that introduction. Let's hear what his opponent said, Trump. It is a profound honor to address the 75th annual Al Smith Dinner. For generations, this wonderful event has been a revered institution in New York and New York life. I fondly remember attending with my father a long time ago. I was a young man, but never forgot it. This organization's incredible tradition of Catholic charity exemplifies the very best, not only of this city, but of this country. I want to thank Cardinal Dolan, a very special man, for his extraordinary stewardship of the Archdiocese and for his deep dedication to God and to our nation. I also want to thank him for all of the help he's given me and so many things and so many different ways. Thank you very much, Cardinal. We very much appreciate it. Let me also thank Mary Erdos and the entire Alfred E. Smith Memorial Foundation. As you know, tonight's Al Smith dinner is unlike any other, sadly. Our country and the entire world have been struck with a once in a lifetime global pandemic. China shouldn't have let it happen, but it did. When the virus came in from China, we saw New Yorkers respond with a same grit and tenacity, courage and selflessness that have always defined this city that we love so much. Doctors and nurses worked around the clock the heroes of the New York PD, NYPD, we love them and they endorsed me so well. And other first responders risked their lives and entries. You served with the supreme devotion to your fellow citizens. The Alfred E. Smith Memorial Foundation made a historic $8 million gift to support the children and the families of New York. Thank you. You showed the world the essence of the Catholic faith. I've known about it for a long time. I lived right next to a magnificent Catholic church. As Jesus Christ said in the gospel, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. As president, I want to thank the Catholic community for the magnificent generosity you showed in America's hour of need. We mourn for all of those who lost a loved one, and in their memory, we will defeat the virus. 
Through advances in treatment, we have reduced the fatality rate by 85% since just April. We are on track to develop and distribute a vaccine before the end of the year and maybe substantially before. And I just want to say that the end of the pandemic is in sight and next year will be one of the greatest years in the history of our country. From the very beginning of our republic, Catholics have uplifted and enriched our nation beyond measure. Catholics like Charles Carroll helped secure American independence. Women like St. Elizabeth Ann Seton founded a movement that created thousands of schools and lifted children out of poverty. And the great Al Smith, the original happy warrior, that's what he was. He was a happy warrior. I know it well. I consider myself to be a happy warrior, but it's not so easy at these times. But he was a happy warrior of American politics. He spent his life fighting for hardworking Americans and battling the anti-Catholic prejudice that you see even today coming out of the Democrat Party. Today, this amazing group continues that proud tradition of faithful service. Your work reminds us of an essential truth. In this country, civil society, and especially our religious institutions, are an essential foundation of American freedom. Our nation is strong because of Catholics and, frankly, people of all faiths. That is why, as president, one of my top priorities is to defend religious liberty and the cherished role of faith and faith-based organizations. He says that the nation is strong because of the Catholic Church. But now he adds something else and other religions. But he has already blown it. The nation is strong because of the Catholic Church. Isn't that a dragon speaking? The two-horned beast which is United States, to, uh, this was written by Labbara, a, 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 an advanced pioneer, he says, we will look at the profession of the Protestants. They say amen to the declaration of, of Republicans. And in addition to that, they declare that freedom of conscience is for all, that the Bible is the only standard of faith for Protestants, Believe, believe whatever is found in the Bible against the profession of the Protestants and Republicans who have nothing to offer. Their profession is right. We might expect a millennium indeed with where their profession lived out. And continues, this constitution and the laws of the United States, which shall be made in, pers in pursuance, pursuance thereof, shall be the supreme law of the land and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby anything in the constitution or laws or any state to to the contrary notwithstanding section three the members of the several state legislature and executive and judicial officers officers both of the United States and of the several states shall be bound by oath or affirmation to support the Constitution, but no religious test shall ever be required as a qualification to office or public trust under the United States. Question, can you come think and say and give a sermon in the parliament and say the United States is the second beast and the Vatican or the papacy is the first beast and you're seven Adventists and you, you stand really in that parliament and continue. You cannot. You cannot. Why? Because that goes against the liberties of the state. This is a book, uh, a page by which has the church as a civil power. Bring the page later. The supreme and independent authority in the spiritual realm cannot be exercised adequately unless it is recognized by the rulers of the state. So you can never have uh, authority, independent authority, except it is recognized by the state. So in other words, if the Vatican, if Rome wants to be supreme and independent in authority in the spiritual realm, it can never exercise that authority unless it is recognized by 
the, the rulers of the state. In other words, the United States can be the one to recognize it and restore it back to its power. That's what it's coming to do. Pope Leo calls attention to such recognition in the official relations between civil governments and the church for many centuries. Then he points out that it was not without a singular disposition of God's providence that this independence and freedom of action were for a long time safeguarded through the church's possession and exercise of civil sovereignty. So the church possesses and exercises civil sovereignty. The church itself is a civil ruler. The reference is, of course, to the Papal States, the temporal power, which the government of Italy took by force from the church. Leo does not say that the church must have civil power over the Papal States or over any other territory at all times and in circumstances. The surest safeguard of her independence. He is speaking historically. The end that he desires to see attained is the freedom for the church to exercise her spiritual and moral mission. Conceivably, that that end might be reached by other means than that of temporal sovereignty. It might be realized by adequate international recognition and guarantees. You see. So the only way Rome can come back is when it is realized by adequate international recognition and guarantees. So United States should sell this system internationally. This one continues. This is uh, at, at the attitude of the state toward the church. This is the, the page of Notre Dame, the University of Notre Dame, Maritain says, but Pope Leo goes further. He declares that the state must not only have care for religion, but recognize the true religion. So if the true religion is Catholicism, the state must recognize it and at least try to give it higher position. This means the form of religion professed by the Catholic Church. You see, it is a thorough logical position. If the state is under moral comparison to profess and promote religion, it is obviously obliged to profess and promote only the religion that is true. For no individual, no group for individuals, no society, no state is justified in supporting error or in according to error, the same recognition as to truth. So they put it very well that it is the state that should accept this system, the, the, the true religion, which true religion, according to them, is Catholicism. And that one should be recognized through a logical position and given power to continue working. And, and here is George W. Bush, White House Archives, says he gives a speech and what does he say? Remarks by the president to cardinals, bishops, and Catholic leaders. Let, let's read. All of you are part of the humanizing mission, which is part of the Great Commission. The Pope and the Pope John Paul II Cultural Center, which we will dedicate tomorrow, will bring this message to generations of Americans in this capital of our nation. What is that message? The best way to honor John Paul II, truly one of the great men, is to take his teachings seriously. Okay, a politician is saying we should take the teachings of the Pope seriously, is to listen to his words and put his words and teachings into action here in America. This is a challenge we must accept. Okay, do they know it's a challenge? Yes, of course, because America has nothing to do with that. 
but this is a challenge that this beast must accept. So in other words, the beast is tending, slowly and slowly is tending, is speaking now dragon language. And very soon the remaining thing is to make people worship, to create a system that will make people worship the first beast. But you know something about our country, a country with the right focus and the right leadership, it is a challenge this nation will accept because this is a great land. So the United States must accept popery of the papacy to come and take control throughout the world. It must accept that challenge. So now that it is embedded within uh, American presidential blood to, to always praise the papacy. Liberty Magazine, 1980, if Christians unite, we can do anything. We can pass any law or an amendment, and that's exactly what we intend to do. So come together. That's why it's the United States calling all these people together. The next obligation that a citizen of God is world or the oaths is to himself remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, is a command for the personal benefit of each citizen. That is Pat Robertson, the New World Order. Higher civilization rise when people can rest and draw inspiration from God. Laws in America that mandate a day of rest have been nullified. They are soon coming as a violation of the separation of church and state, as an outright insult to God and his plan. There you go. They say it, they say it plainly. There's nothing to do. So let's see what they say, something else. Only those policies that can be show, shown to have a clearly secular purpose are recognized. So they can only recognize only those policies that, that can be shown to have a clearly secular, and the word secular means without God. Dragon are recognized. So what does America recognize? Secular stuff. And that's why in the first dollar itself, there is uh, oh, uh, there is a uh, Nuvas Ordo uh, Nuvas Ordo Seculorum, which means or oh, the new order of secular, the new secular order. So now that's the new old order, which does not secular, which means it does not recognize God. Revelation 14, 6 to 7 says, Then I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. So you see, there's nation, tribe, tongue, and people. There is a message to go to the world and warn them about, cause, about the coming catastrophes because they're really coming. They are coming already. They, are, they want executive orders to everyone, encyclicals to everyone. What about the three ages messages? Why don't they go to the world? Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. This is the message. People must listen to this message and not turn into this business of coming together. Let us do something to protect the environment. Let us come together and do something to prevent this and this. The state wants us to come together and do this. We have always heard it from pastors and leaders of the church, even among the Jews themselves, saying, okay, no, this is a, a good thing. But listen to what Jesus says in Spirit of for Prophecy, uh, Councils for the Church, page 314, paragraph 4. The government under which Jesus lived was corrupt and oppressive. On every hand, there were, were crying abuses, extortion, intolerance, and grinding cruelty. Yet the Savior attempted no civil reforms. There is no civil reform that the church needs to do. 
We're not supposed to go to 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 airfields and 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 football grounds and everywhere to show our civil power how how we exist. No. He attacked no nation national abusers, no co condemned the, na the national enemies. He did not interfere with the authority or administration of those in power. He who was our example kept aloof from earthly governments, not because he was indifferent to the wars of men, but because the remedy did not lie in mere human and external measures. To be efficient, the cure must reach men individually and must regenerate the heart. So the cure is not in doing things the secular way or trying to come together and do things because that's not the way things will happen. The cure is in, is in, the, in, in reaching everyone individually. Again and again, Christ has been asked to, de to decide legal and political questions, but he refused to interfere in temporal matters. Christ stood in our world as the head of the great spiritual kingdom that he came to our world to establish the kingdom of righteousness. His teaching made plain the enabling, sanctifying principles that govern this kingdom. He showed that justice and mercy and love are the controlling powers in Jehovah's kingdom. So justice and mercy and love are the controllers in his kingdom, not coercion, not bringing uh, wars and guns and fighting people and, and, and seeing that this one does not agree with us, then we, we, can, we can take him out. That is not what Christ did. Isn't it a call that even within us, there's, there's this mindset of coming together, the church and the state, the state has asked us to do this. No, they should be separate. We, we have an obligation to the state to pay the taxes, but we have an obligation to God to pay the tithe. Now, we cannot use our tithe to the government. Neither can you use the taxes for the church. If these two cannot mix, why should, should there come a time when the government will be collecting tithe from people on behalf of the church? Or will come a time when the church collects ta uh, taxes for, for the government? Who collects today marriage tax? It is the churches. So the churches are combining with the state. Protestantism is dying. Who is it possible that now we are going to go digital that all the, 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 the tithes must reach the government and even taxed in before they are all in, before they are used, but not such was in the government and kingdom Jesus wants to establish. It must be on an individual basis, not, not, not combining the two. The dragon wants to, to combine the church and state. When we see these things in the churches today, that is dragon language coming together of the church and state. This is dragon language. You have seen United States, the presidents themselves speaking and showing that surely they are ready to put the image of the beast in place. The next, in the next episode, we shall look at in the next episode, we shall look at uh, the implementation of you know, how United States militarily, commercially, whatever, in, in any form, how they're trying to, to dig up and give the power back to the beast. That will be episode three, and, uh, uh, part three. This was part two. We shall look at how United States now does it. They have just been, they have just been speaking, but now we are going to see underground work. How do they do it? Does the United States, does the Vatican command the United States to do its bidding and go and fight wars for it? 
it will be very interesting. May God help us and we open our eyes and know that we are closer to the coming time of forced worship that the world has never seen. But we have to be prepared and start and start gathering ourselves in, in Christ because it's the only safe place where we can hide. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for having led us. We pray that you may take these words to the whole world, help people to listen and open our eyes that we may see. Open the eyes of the presidents and kings of the world that they may understand that you love them and you want to save them from the beast, from the dragon that is controlling them. Be with us until we meet again in Jesus' name. Amen.